Hi guys, this is Horror Studio One with you again with one of our heartfelt talks. So if you guys do notice, um, our video today has a pretty interesting title. It only has one true scary story about Jin encounters. Um, in this video, you'll hear a story, uh, some personal information from a subscriber of mine, and also an instruction manual how to summon a jinn. Okay, now, for those of you who don't know what a jinn is, it's basically like a genie or a spiritual entity in, in some other cultures. Arabic, I think? I, I'm not really sure. Don't quote me on that and whatever culture. is just Middle Eastern. Um, it's more towards that area. Uh, so there are some instructions on how to do it. It sounds friggin' insane to me, you know? I'm not gonna spoil it, but watch till the end of the video guys personally i've always wanted gin stories there hasn't been a lot sent to me basically uh we read some on live streams i have some personal experiences with gins not personal experience but a friend of mine uh he's egyptian uh and he, he went to rome actually to go on vacation and he brought back this i guess this little box and inside he said there was an entity that's been causing him nightmares and it's supposed to be some kind of demon thing. I don't know, okay? He keeps telling me to, to put it on my channel. I'm not sure if I really want to because he's telling me that people get nightmares. Like, it's like just crazy stuff, okay? Demonic stuff that I don't want to touch, you know? And um, maybe I'll do like a video on that specific item one day, but that really reminds me of a djinn. And I asked him, is it similar? And he said, yes, it's a similar thing to what's known as a djinn. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And if you guys want me to feature that item that my friend has, real true item, you know, he lives 20 minutes away from me. I can just grab it, put it into a video, put it in the comments below if you guys do want it. Anyways, without further ado, grab a blanket, turn off your lights, and let's listen to Jin. This is a real-life incident about a relative who dabbled in the black arts and paid a very heavy price for it. My sister was married to a Muslim guy and his aunt was highly interested in mastering certain practices mentioned in the Quran, which if done correctly, can allegedly give you a lot of powers. However, Islam forbids you to summon these beings as, as you have a free will if you do, you will pay the price according to the practice of this religion. Muslims believe in the concept of jinns, which are powerful supernatural entities, and there are good ones as well as bad jinns. There are surahs, chapters in the Quran, which outline the procedure for capturing and enslaving these jinns. Apparently, it is a very dangerous procedure, as it has to be performed by the person when he or she is alone, and the complete procedure stretches over several days, for a few hours each day. Obviously, the jinns are not very happy when a person tries to perform this ritual, and they will try their best to scare that person. Getting scared and or leaving the procedure halfway through is one of the worst things one can do as failure to complete it will lead to the death of the person or result in him or her becoming mad or possessed. Therefore, only a brave-hearted person who has enough faith in himself and God should ideally attempt this. Even after the ritual is successfully completed and the person has managed to capture a jinn, he or she has to exert a lot of control as otherwise, the jinn can turn against its master and kill him or her. One has to read the namaz five times a day, keep Rosa fast, and observe other strict religious disciplines to keep the jinn in control. The jinn will implicitly obey its master and do whatever is asked of it, as it is a supernatural being. The master will no doubt become a very powerful and very rich person but he or she is expected to use the powers for the benefit of others. All this I have learned from my Muslim friends and I hope my other Muslim readers can verify what I have mentioned here. Coming back to my story, this lady, which was my brother-in-law's aunt, was somehow fascinated with this ritual and wanted to perform it. 
All this happened 10 to 15 years ago, when she was quite young, and nobody knows why she wanted to get involved in something so dangerous. Maybe her youth and naivety made her oblivious to the risk, or she was bored and wanted to do something exciting, or maybe... Maybe she craved for the powers that would be hers once she completed the ritual. Whatever the reason, she did not inform her husband, as he would have certainly forbidden her, and she practicing it daily when her husband was away from work. At first, it went smoothly, but gradually, she started encountering paranormal phenomena, such as seeing shadows and hearing whispers all around her, smoke or mist pouring in from everywhere and shrouding her, unbearable changes in temperature, both hot and cold, etc. Though she was frightened out of her mind, she continued her pursuit until she crossed the point of no return, when these events intensified. She started seeing demons all around and hearing their frightful screams and whispers. To cut a long story short, one day, she could bear it no more and fainted out of fright in the middle of the ritual. This part of the story was coaxed out later by her husband and other relatives, but she was also incoherent and there were huge lapses in her narrative. So, when her husband came home and saw his wife lying senseless with the holy Quran in her lap, he at once guessed what she had done. He had, however, no idea how far she had gone. She suffered from high fever for several days and was almost at death's door more than once. Needless to say, the procedure was disrupted and she was never able to complete it. When she became well again, her family members noticed a huge change in her behavior. She used to be very cheerful and friendly. Now, her demeanor changed to cold and calculating, e even sinister at times. She would no longer laugh and enjoy with other women of her age, but sit silently brooding for hours and hours on end. Often, her family members would catch her glaring at one of them malevolently. She would lapse into periods of insanity, and then she would order others around in a male, guttural voice. Once, her mother-in-law had the shock of her life when this lady assumed the voice of the old woman's late husband and ordered her to fetch a glass of water. Even her husband and her children were scared to be alone with her. On one occasion, my sister was alone late one evening, and she was waiting for my brother-in-law. When this lady walked into her house and announced that she would stay with my sister until her husband returned. As many of my brother-in-law's relatives, including this lady, lived in the same building, this was not unusual. But my sister had only been married for a few months and was pregnant, and she had heard about this story from her husband. Needless to say, she... She was scared out of her mind and quite relieved when her husband returned shortly after. I heard about this incident around five years ago, and it has been a few years since my brother-in-law has passed away. A, a year ago, I asked my sister about the woman. She told me after her husband died, and she was packing his stuff. She came across some books and notes, which used to belong to his aunt. I have copied some of the ritual how to summon these jinns, but I won't be giving the full instructions. Fasting One has to go through a period of fasting from sunrise to sunset for numerous days. Upon breaking the fast, you are allowed only to eat vegetarian prepared meals that have been prepared by yourself. No food that had a soul may be eaten. This rule needs to be followed for a successful evocation. The reason why a vegetarian diet is required is because the body needs to be detoxified of any spiritual impurities. This also helps in meditation and the invocation of angelic assistance. Without the invocation of angelic assistance, 
The operator's life is exposed to great danger without question. If you look at various medieval grimmeries, you will see a similar fasting regime, which attributes the same principle. Retreat, Chilla. The operator has to retreat into isolation. This basically means you need to shut yourself into a room where no one is allowed. This can range from a few days to a full 40 day treatment for complete gen evocations. The room is thoroughly cleansed with no furniture, etc. Constantly incest is burned and rose water is sprinkled in the four corners. This room becomes the operator's temple where he or she prays and meditates. Ultimately, it is here in this room that the jinn is called. The operator can open a window for ventilation. Once into the spiritual retreat, there is minimal sleep. Around the clock, various mantras are recited and constant forgiveness is asked from the divine. If one has to sleep, then this has to be done while in a sitting position. Clothing must be clean always while in retreat, and holy washes are performed numerous times during the day. Again, various incense attributes to various types of evocation. To summon a normal jinn, you would have to use a particular type of incense, but for a jinn king, it would be completely different. Lunar Calendar Jinn evocation is done on the selected months of the Arabic lunar calendar. Certain months are not suitable for evocation, especially the month of Ramadan, which is the holy month of Muslims. To try and summon a jinn in the holy month of Ramadan is suicidal. Muslim jinns like Muslim humans also fast and pray, and to be summoned at this time leads to grave danger with even the possibility of loss of life. Also, an evocation is prohibited on a Thursday night, as again for Muslim jinns and humans, Thursday night is a special night for prayers leading up to the Friday prayer. I can speak from the experiences as I was present in a similar situation, and I am just about here to tell my tale. The Actual Night of the Ritual All jinn evocation is done at night and in complete darkness. Jinn, as a rule, do not like any light and thus the room needs to be in pitch black with the curtains closed. No light should enter the room whatsoever. The operator must erect a circle of protection. The circle can be drawn with chalk on the ground, but due to modern day carpeting, the circle may also be sketched on canvas and then placed on the ground. Selected Quranic verses are written around the circle perimeter. Various amulets of protection are also written within the circle. The amulets are in the form of commas, squares with numbers in Arabic. Magical diagrams and angelic scripts are also written in various positions within the circle. Incense is burnt within the circle of protection. The censer is positioned towards the east. The operator enters the circle of protection and using a dagger, recites various mantras and closes the circle by tracing the outer perimeter. The outer perimeter is sprinkled with iron fillings as Jin fear iron. The operator inscribes various symbols on his or her forehead and arms for added protection. For the final protection phase, the operator wears a protective vest inscribed with Quranic verses. The only weapon that is needed if the circle is broken is the dagger. Operator may utilize the dagger in defense if attacked. A prayer mat is placed on a chair and in turn, the chair is positioned in the eastern side of the room outside the circle. The chair is placed there for the jinn to sit on if the jinn wishes. Fresh flowers, specifically roses of various colors, are placed next to the chair in a vase. Rose petals are also thrown outside the circle in vast quantities. The operator starts reciting the mantras in complete darkness. The mantras are repeated in thousands of cycles again and again. A piece of small cloth soaked in mustard oil with comma inscriptions is burnt on the censer. Without question, the room will be filled with various presences. 
Although it is completely dark, the operator will be able to see these as most of them will be crowded around the circle, howling and shouting to the operator to stop the ritual. They will try and break into the circle, but the will, faith, and courage of the operator needs to be strong, and he or she must not stop the recitation of the mantras until the full cycle is completed. This is the ultimate test of courage. The dagger at this point is clutched in the hands in case there is a breach. The whole room will be in complete pandemonium. If the circle is broken, then be prepared to have a physical fight. Once the cycle of repetition is completed, the howling stops and a tall bodily figure can be seen either standing or sitting on the chair. The figure glows in brilliant yellow-red light and it is recommended not to look directly at it as severe damage can be done to the eyes because of the intensity of the light. The jinn will not be a happy one as it has been forced to come against its wishes. Be prepared to face an angry jinn at this point. After making peace, usually the jinn calms down for you to have a conversation, etc. Sometimes, if you are unlucky, you might find a jinn which is extremely stubborn and violent nature that won't give up without a struggle. Again, in this situation, one recites various mantras for constraints. This can take minutes to several hours, depending upon the resistance. A conversation takes place and finally, the jinn is asked for a secret name, which is reluctantly gives to the operator, so when this name is whispered, it arrives instantaneously for future evocations. Once the objective is met, the jinn is released and thanked for its arrival. It is then asked to depart peacefully. The jinn may not want to leave, thus powerful mantras for banishing is performed. Once the jinn leaves the room and comes back to its normal state, the operator does not leave the circle until a closing ritual is performed for his or her safety. The entire ritual from start to finish can last up to several hours and is extremely energy draining. The mental and physical stress is so demanding. For days afterwards, the operator feels he or she is suffering from severe bodily aches and pains. Before retiring to bed, and whilst leaving the house for the next 21 days, various mantras are recited for the operator's protection. If the operator forgets to do this, then they may be open for a gen attack, which can lead to the ultimate death and the worst scenarios. People that involve themselves in Jin evocation have their lives changed completely. There, there is no turning back. You have to follow strict rules as a slight deviation and you are subject to serious injuries.